Block Media. This is from the core member of the Bong Dao. His name's Nan. Hey, say hello to the Block, Block Media. Hi, everybody. Thank you very much for having me. Wonderful to be here with the Block Media team and excited about KBW. Yeah, excited. How was thinking about a KBW season? Is it good? Uh, it's been fantastic. I've had the opportunity to obviously speak at a panel, um, give a little bit of insight about you know what we're looking to see in terms of crypto adoption, how we're excited to see you know not only meme coins, but in general, new products getting uh, pushed out here, as well as obviously just getting to see what everybody's demoing and, uh, and releasing, catching up with some good friends. Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> Yeah, actually, we I'm really good big fan of Fong because I already like know about the Fong team, and I know really love the meme coin like after FTS. Mm. So, but no other readers or viewers don't know about the Fong and yourself. Mm. So, can you say it about briefly to the, our readers and viewers? Sure. Um, so, Bonk is a token that started in December 2022. Um, the goal essentially was how we could bring back a lot of friend or a bunch of uh, excitement, uh, you know, like interest and uh, user activity back to the ecosystem in the light of everything that had been going on. Um, so essentially what we had seen was that there's still people developing, there were still artists creating work, there were still new games coming out, but there wasn't, you know, there wasn't really the interest in spending money, right? It was a bad time inside of the ecosystem. So Bonk was designed as essentially a Christmas gift that people were able to utilize as heavily as possible across a wide variety of integrations and uh, just doing something in a time where there wasn't really much else to do. Um, so Bonk went from an initial 40 integrations to now it's up to over 400 integrations that's being actively used inside of Solana and on 11 other chains now. Um, and really what we focus on is how can we empower developers, community members, um, artists for the things that they want to create that maybe they don't necessarily have the way to market themselves or maybe they're having uh, you know problem getting users or you know pushing that message out in such a way and all we're really looking to do is say you know we're here we're excited to try new things uh, and we want the dog to be uh, a big part of that so i've been working on not only creating a bunch of things for the dow and a bunch of experiences in that way um, but i've also been helping to get bond organized around the world um, and specifically here in Korea, figure out how we can support not only on the musical side, um, so we're working with a local K-pop band, but also with a, um, a charitable foundation that we run called Bonk for Paws. We're actually working on breaking a Guinness World Record here in Seoul on the 5th for the most dogs walked um, at one time. So that's uh, that's what I'm training for right now. Interesting. I saw that the use of the 40 of dogs or running it like Bonk. Yeah. Why you guys are interested about like that? I think there's a lot of different opportunities right now um, where teams are doing like crypto specific marketing um, and trying to bring you know more users for people who are already inside of here. Um, what we've always tried to do is look outside the box a little bit, get interest from external areas, um, and obviously like doing some good, helping out animal charities um, is something we're really excited about. So we worked with the local team called KK9R. Uh, we came up with a bunch of different ideas. It's like we want to do the most dog adoptions in any period of time. But really just learning about the work that they're doing, especially on rehousing a bunch of animals that have been in rough situations. Uh, we found that we could probably do something that's fun, active, interesting. I think everyone's looking forward to watching me getting uh, tugged around by 40 different dogs. Um, but it's also going to be something where, you know, at the end of the day, it's not only a charitable donation, but it's also going to help all those dogs find new homes. Um, so something we can feel good about. It'll ideally be a large marketing sign and get people talking about Bonk and everything that goes on there. So we're just excited to, to be a part of that. Interesting. The guys, I, I, it's a main point. We already have the dogs worse, right? Yeah. Like other types. We know the pet pet, but the dog is the one of the popular one in the main point. What's different from like, like Sui Inu or like Doji and other main points? Yeah, so I think uh, you've obviously seen like Doge creating their own chain, uh, building out there, seeing massive amounts of success. It's one of the original tokens that I think people look at when they think about crypto. It's been around for a very long period of time. In the same way that SHIB is trying to build out Shibarium, um, and then you obviously see teams like Floki that are working through all their various different like utilities and build out. Um, we're really looking at Bonk as a way that it can accelerate what people are already working on, and it can fill the gap that people are looking for on a social level. Uh, so not only are we working with development teams to come up with uh, various different products, services, things of that nature, uh, but we're looking to see you know, what can people come up with ideas for Bonk and what do they really want to promote or what do they want to organize. A lot of people just want to make products and you know, you'll see this a lot where devs will create something maybe for a hackathon, they'll work on it for a little bit of time, but then you know, maybe it doesn't get the attention that it needs on a longer term basis. Working with groups like the Bonk DAO, uh, then we can actually figure out you know, how can we continue to get 
daily active users push through into these different areas? How can we get people excited about all these different things? And how can we make sure that people just continue to push things forward? Because we need more consumer apps, we need more you know, products that people are going to potentially use on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. Uh, and the only way that we're going to get there is by continued experimentation. So we have to make sure that teams are interested in doing it. Mm. And like, I know the bone down, but you can tell me though about the bone down's more details to our readers and viewers. Sure. So the Bank DAO was the legal representation, the foundation we set up essentially to manage a portion of the initial bank token supply. Uh, what we wanted to do, even from the start, is that we knew that there was a longer term vision, uh, but we weren't really sure what that was going to take out. Right? It was in a when we launched Bank, it was in a very uncertain time, and we wanted to see what the best way forward would end up being. So we created the Bank DAO, uh, which is stewarded by eleven uh, council members who are various names inside of the ecosystem. You have guys like Utaro out of Orca. You have people like Nick from the Planosaurus team, um, you know, Mert out of Helios, myself, we're all council members there. But the ideal goal is how can we take community organized uh, initiatives, how can we take those proposals, utilize the funding that we do have and the reach and the, the marketing attention that we do have for good uses. Um, so not only something where all bank holders have a voice on what the DAO is doing, but so that we, as people who are you know, helping to run the Bonk DAO, can focus in certain areas so that the average holder of Bonk doesn't have to worry too much, right? Mm, people right. like being able to choose when they want to participate inside of governance. Uh, we don't want to have to force them into it as much as possible. Mm, right, I understand that. Like, but I know about the so initial airdrop to Solar users, right? It's a really big bomb at this so Bonk, like Solar Saga. We know that the Solar is mobile, right? So. I think like, what do you think about the airdrop in like Solana? Because yeah. it, you guys bombed it, <laughs> right? I think, uh, so obviously giving people money, giving people tokens, they're excited about that, right? It's very, it, everybody wants to open something up on Christmas, right? Um, we looked at the airdrop as a way to not only reward people who were around at dark periods of time, but also been good actors, right? So whether you're a trader or a collector, whether you're an artist, trying to make new works or whether you were just looking to be a part of different NFT communities. Uh, you had been a part of a lot of Solana success through 2020 and 2021. Um, and you'd probably also held on through a lot of the downsides that had occurred in 2022. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that for 2023, 2024, 2025, that these are positive opportunities. Uh, and we'd seen the effectiveness of various campaigns and things like DeFi Summer and the EVM ecosystems. And we knew that we could help contribute to, to a similar effect there in Solana specifically. Um, so we organized the airdrop to essentially say, these are good actors, these are people that we trust, we believe in, we want them to continue to you know, experience and try things out on Solana, and the airdrop was a good way to do that. Then you have things like Solana Mobile, which is, we saw the idea and the vision that you know, mobile first applications had but the issue with app store duopolies, things of that nature, made it very hard for people who were building consumer apps to necessarily get pushed out onto a mobile area or to get going through approvals and things of that nature. So we decided to help out Solana Mobile specifically as not only a distribution mechanism for Bonk, but also as a way for us to get excitement around Solana Mobile. Uh, luckily, Bonk had done very well. Uh, the, so the airdrop for the phone for many people actually paid off the phone, uh, which is always great to see. But we, we really wanted to organize this as much as we could where we focus on here's something that we think is a good idea that we know just needs a little bit of help and we're pushing forward and we'll continue to do that. Yeah. Actually, it's a Korean market. It's really focused on retail play, but it's also bullish to other like altcoins and other things. So what do you guys are thinking about the how to burden in the Korean market or you guys start just like not only retails to like projects or maybe a solar ecosystem and other wises. Yeah, I think we've started working uh, specifically here in Korea since the beginning of 2024. Um, one of the things that we don't want to do is just show up for a conference, right? Uh, so we really work on how can we come to areas and build trust in those parts of the ecosystem? How can we find teams that are looking for help? How can we find you know causes that we're passionate about? or areas that we really want to highlight. And a lot of that comes from being on the ground, talking to people at various different opportunities, stuff like KVW, uh, but then building on that, okay, what do we want to support? What do we need to do? Um, and so here for us in Korea specifically, we've been partnering with a bunch of great local teams like the Fidelian NFT project, 
um, and we're able to not only utilize like, Solana Foundation's presence here in Korea um, and, and the individuals who are helping to run that as a way to continue to build out that trust and continue to get people excited and interested um, about not only Bonk in Korea, but also to get more people who are Bonk holders excited about the Korean ecosystem and the projects that are coming out of that. Um, so we're just continuing to basically see how can we take the Korean ecosystem and provide you know, be a good actor to it, be, you know, provide value to it in, in some way, shape, or form, but also help to grow the Korean part of Bonk. Mm, Korean product of Bonk. Yeah. <laughs> product. Which product? Like? Uh, so I think a lot of what we're focusing on you know, for the retail users is, is something, you know, you'll see Bonk Bot is obviously going to be relatively yeah. popular. Uh, you're going to be able to see you know, the DEX offerings that are available in things like Bonk Swap or you know uh, applications and consumer-facing utilities. Things like Pooper Scooper are you know always fun, easy to promote. Um, but we're really excited about obviously you know, what we can continue to build out and what the next generation of tools that people are going to be looking for is. Mm, interesting, because like Koreans are really not family really DeFi right mm -hmm. now. But using a bot, bot is yeah. like onboarding like ton, but not just ton of Telegram, right? So it doesn't matter about that DeFi, not only a DeFi card, right? Yeah. We can pay for the dollars to use a bot like Telegram and using bot too. So it's not kind of on ref and off ref, so it's more easier to create a bot. Yeah, you'll see um, a lot of the issue for getting people to try out new ecosystems or anything in there is on a wallet-based level, right? Or it's a, on a bridging-based level. And there's a lot of teams that are looking yeah. to solve that. We actually rolled out a product uh, with partnerships uh, called Bonk Rewards. So we're utilizing a team called Tiplinks Technology, where essentially, you know, in order for me to give somebody a Bonk, right? Normally they have to have a Solana wallet, you know, they have to already be available. Maybe they need a, you know, a centralized exchange account that I send it to. Right, but they need they need to give me something, and they already need to have had a product set up, right? Uh, so what we're organizing with Bonk, uh, sorry, with the Bonk Mark product is that uh, now all you need is an email address, and I can start sending people Bonk. And then, so you can take that setup time for the average person to get their hands on a token, and that can go from ten steps on you know centralized and decentralized exchanges. That can go down to two, right? You send somebody Bonk, it could be a family member, a friend, anybody. Uh, all of a sudden now they're they're at their wallet. They're able to start utilizing the various things that we're creating, which makes it much easier for us to continue to spread the message and things that we're excited about for a while. Uh, so the whole goal there is basically, we know that meme coins, community tokens, these things, once people get their hands on them, they're excited about it, they want to participate, they want to learn more, but that first act of like just getting it in people's hands is very difficult. So once again, you know, it comes back to the idea of like we as Bonk Dow are just very interested in finding initiatives that we think can support, continue to grow Bonk, and fund those or help them out in some way, shape, or form. Interesting. Like emails yeah. are really big deal. <laughs> thing. I never do like before in Korea because Korea's like to support like Aptos Wallet or maybe T Wallet kind of other stops. But I always use it like that. But I just not using only like emails all time. It's maybe for easier to like get through Web two people to Web three, right? Yeah. Ideally, we'll be able to get it to the point where you know, it's not. It's going to be able to use a photo, a phone number, or something like what it could be for you know to cow talk or any of these other platforms, right? Like wherever people are talking about tokens, right? Like we want Bonk to be able to be activated there. Um, so if we can get it to the point where it's being to be utilized inside of WhatsApp or Line or any of these other products going forward, you know, Telegram's already great. It's been organized not only through ton wallets but through various different you know infrastructure products. Now we need to see how can we get Bonk available on as many of these as possible, just so that our goal of continuing to expand Bonk's reach and the social presence that it has is easy to do. Wait, what have you been the biggest challenges the Bonk has been facing, and how has the Bonk team like addressing that? And looking forward, to it, what opportunities do you see the Bonk and the border of Bonk systems? Yeah, I think the goal for Bonk has always been to grow in a decentralized manner and to continue to fund not just one group, right, but multiple different companies. So Bonk's now gotten to the point where it's about eight separate entities that are all continuing to push various different things, right? The Charitable Foundation is one arm, you have uh, you know, consumer applications like Moonwalk is another in the same sort of way that you'll have like the DAO and that, and that side is like a you know, third entity. And these are all connected and they all want this you know, similar things for Bonk, but they have different goals, they have different teams behind them, you know, various different people uh, working on each one of these. So coordinating a pretty large and diverse group of, of individuals is difficult, but not impossible. 
Um, I think we've done a lot to streamline that over the past six months, and now you're seeing things like the Bonk Dragon Initiative as a way to tie all of these various companies together and all these different opportunities. Now we're actually able to start expanding Bonk into more ecosystems, like the recent work that we've done with the Manta team, uh, where now we can direct Bonk users in order to experience other ecosystems. So not just the project that we're directly helping and funding, uh, but also these opportunities that other teams are interested in getting Bonk available on other networks, or getting it to something where they're a little bit, maybe they're just focused on developing the NFT or the DeFi ecosystem in their current areas, and Bonk users will have the opportunity to go and experience that. Mm, very, very, very. That actually, I want to hear about your more details of your journey to yeah. get in crypto, and what about the Bonk team? Sure, absolutely. Um, so my journey into crypto is from the development side. Uh, so I come from a computer science background. I was lucky enough to work on a, you know, a couple of different projects, get my teeth. Uh, you know, into the ecosystem over the course of the last four or five years. Um, I got put into Solana uh, in early 2021, uh, and that was actually much more so where I found the NFT side of the, of the crypto ecosystem. Uh, so I was very active in a couple of different groups, uh, leading organizations there, uh, and where I came into a bit more of like a management oversight role. Um, then for Bonk, I was, able, I was lucky enough to be one of the you know, core contributors, people helping to organize you know, everything behind the scenes for the initial launches, airdrops, things of that nature. And then once we had moved on from okay, now, you know, launching the token, getting foundation set up, now I get to do a lot more of the work around, you know, what does it mean for Bonk to move into a new region? What does it mean for us to continue to expand in different areas? Um, and how can we you know, continue to improve and coordinate as many of these teams as possible? Actually, some Korean really love to look like trading Bitcoin, but they don't know about the how to start it and how to get in like Genuine, genuine little memes, like kind of minded. Yeah. They don't have, like vibe just for training. So it's really different to buy for three years. Yeah, I think it's always been something where we want to be telling the story that people are interested in here, right? We want to be creating something for different regions that excite them in different ways. Um, so some of what Bonk does is, you know, very behind the scenes, right? Like we run validator infrastructure to help keep the network running. Yeah. Uh, we organize things around various DeFi products or LSTs, stuff of that nature. And, you know, there's various teams presenting here in Korea, like Soul Layer Group. Um, but a lot of the things that we do, it goes behind the scenes because it's not part of the fun, like consumer facing side, right? So we're committed to helping at all levels of the Solana ecosystem and you know, other ecosystems that we continue to expand. Uh, but a lot of what you'll see is usually just the fun stuff that people care about. <laughs> hey, yeah. So, projects, like, what are some key initiatives for projects that Bomb DAO is currently working on? And can you share a more details of the DAO's long term strategy of the goals? All the visions or like milestones are kind of bad. Yeah, so uh, one of the biggest goals for the Bonk DAO is obviously get it to the point where it's running autonomously, it's not needed in terms of intervention, and all of the users uh, who are you know, currently holding Bonk feel like their voices are being heard. Uh, a lot of that requires you know, legal regulatory setup and bureaucratic work and, you know, in order to make things run smoothly behind the scenes. And that's a lot of the structuring and development that's going on internally inside of Bonk right now. But what you'll see is top level initiatives like what we're doing to sponsor, uh, like Dubai his new uh, Baseball United uh, that's coming out of the UAE. Uh, so an opportunity for Bonk to essentially be a headline sponsor there, where not only are we going to be a marketing partner, right, but we're also going to be able to start being a technical partner. We're able to take these consumer-facing applications that we developed for crypto consumers and start porting them over to, you know, crypto interested people, right? People who may have heard of it, they may have traded it before, but they're not using dApps in an everyday part of their life. And now we're able to make Bonk start to be a part of a little more of these sports opportunities. And then once you are there, we're also starting, uh, oh, sorry, uh, the DAO has funded an organization, a DAO Bell, which is what the idea is around IP, uh, not only in terms of like animation, games, design, but also in terms of fashion brands. What does it mean in order to go from creating merch for conferences to creating merch for people? What does it mean in order to utilize Bonk as a logo or to, you know, potentially create it or license it in some way where it's more exciting to the average consumer, right? Um, fashion is a massive industry. Everybody's continuing to be put into situations where they're wanting to see you know, like what is the next step. Uh, I'm not an expert in that. Uh, so one of the best things is that uh, we get to find people who are experts in those fields, who are excited or interested about Bonk, uh, where you know, they just want to create something and we're able to help empower them for that. So a lot of our initiatives are basically going to be find experts in certain fields who already like Bonk, 
who have an idea or a vision or want to create something for it. And then we're going to be able to work with them and, and help bring that to life. Um, and ideally that this project is just going to continue to replicate. And it's not going to be you know, eight companies working on various things for Bonk. It's going to get to the point where there's 10, 20, 50 over the course of the next few years, where we're just going to continue to scale and learn from all these different opportunities that we're pushing out. And then it becomes, you know, I, the goal, I think, is that I hope people don't look at Bonk as just a meme coin. I think they can look at it as more than a meme coin. There's nothing wrong with being looked at as a meme. People like trading them. People like being a part of them. People like you know, getting excited or interested in it. And uh, that's not something we want to move away from. The goal is just to have as many deep layers underneath that. So once people want to dive in past the surface level, they can. And there's going to be something that's available for everybody. Uh, but if all people are interested in is just trading a token, seeing it on a surface level, looking at the marketing activations, or those things and great we'll, we'll let them we'll let them be a part of it that way i really want to like a long term exactly right because i saw like, another mean points but another mean points don't have a long strategy before right because if before we like pump that fun yeah. and kind of like really a small main points are really growing up fast and hype and bump hype and dump right but like boom it's really different types of main point right yeah i think there's a lot of situations where you know, People get promised a lot by various different tokens, and people will have roadmaps to go out the next decade or all these different ideas. But the truth is that it's a, it's a very heavily evolving and adapting space. And these things being worked on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, means that the speed of iteration, what consumers are looking for, what people are interested in, is always going to continue to, to change and adopt. So rather than having this, you know, like hard committed roadmap of, oh, we're going to want to do, you know, points one, two, three, four, right? And go through it in that way. A lot of what we're looking to do is like, what does it mean for Bonk to become, you know, an animated IP? What does it mean for Bonk to become a fashion brand? What does it mean to throw uh, the Miss Bonk Korea beauty pageant that we're running on, on this Saturday as a, as a part of it, right? It's like, and a lot of these things come from like, ah, oh, they're fun ideas that people talk about. But it's like, well, then what does it mean to actually implement them? And if we had kept, you know, the same initial idea for the roadmap as what we started, you know, when when Bonk was first launched two years ago at this point, it, it would look vastly different than what it is right now. So we're priding ourselves on the Bonk DAO being very adaptable, uh, focusing on where people think that things are going to be going, but also making it so that we're long-term sustainable and we're going to be able to be around for the next five, ten years to the point where, you know, you're only going to ever build trust by being around and doing what you say. Uh, so we understand that's going to be a continuous process that you need to get built up uh, well over you know, the next the next cycle, right? Like, so we're we're here. The goal is to build sustainable, useful products that people are excited about, so that people aren't necessarily worried about like, oh, what's going to happen next year? It's like, well, we're worried about what's going to happen in the next two years after that. But we're going to make things that people are going to use right now, and that's the that that's the the thing that I think we're really heavily focused on is how can we be exciting to people right now and how can we be exciting to people next year and the year after that and make them continue to trust Bonk and want to be a part of that community. Sure. Can you say me briefly about the Miss Bonk? Yeah, sure. Uh, so Miss Bonk uh, is an idea that came out of a couple of different uh, contributors who were organizing the idea. Uh, you know, we, we worked with a local uh, couple of teams around the idea of essentially like beauty pageants. Uh, the Weeple organization actually had come up with uh, a couple of these ideas and these suggestions previously. Um, so Miss Bonk right now is a month-long essentially voting beauty pageant. We have a fantastic number of applicants who are essentially competing for the title of Miss Bonk Korea. Um, so they've been going through various stages of online voting that all bonk holders are able to choose, you know, their favorite. Uh, and then we're going to be crowning the winner uh, on the event at, at Saturday here in Seoul. I've never seen like before. I, I've also never seen a beauty <laughs> like this before. I'm very excited to be to be a part of it. Yeah, when I saw, when I visit like first Miss Bonk events, yeah. I saw the Miss Bonk. <laughs> Naturally, so it's really interesting because yeah. I've never seen things like on any other events in Korea because I know the girls are really pretty in Korea yeah, because I'm the girls, but I'm not except yeah. me, but it's really interesting. Every people who particip participated in the events yeah. saw that, oh, it's really interesting. It's sh at first, a shock. Yeah. The second one will be find it bomb. So it's a really cool for us, a cool for bomb, I thought. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's going to be a trigger to find a bomb. Yeah, I think it's a, I, I think it's a way where there's, there's obviously been a ton of different ways that people have you know, pushed for utilizing, you know, 
uh, celebrities or influential people as a way to like push their brands or uh, always as a part of that for, for crypto in general. And I think what we're excited about is like, well, we know that there's people who are you know, fantastic content creators or influencers or people who are pageant queens, right? Like we want to help and support them, but we want to do it in like a bulk way, right? So we know that there's an interest in our community for that. You can see that in how people are voting, how they're participating. Uh, so we just want to continue to empower and, and utilize that. Uh, so ideally, Miss Bond Korea goes really well, and we see if we want to expand it. Uh, I'm I'm very excited for the, for the results on Saturday. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I'm yeah. Glad to hear it. So finally, what is the final question? If there are any I miss about the question, or if you want to talk about more, like, could you tell me about the more? Tell me about our readers or viewers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, biggest thing that I can recommend uh, and that I'd love for everybody to do is to go to uh, bonkcoin.com, check out our Twitter, check out our Instagram, look through all these various sort of things of what Bonk is trying to do and learn a little bit about the story. Uh, so if there's anything that you as somebody who exists inside of the ecosystem, if you're looking to create something, if you're a developer, if you're an artist, if you're a game project, if you want to utilize Bonk's IP in some way, uh, we want to make it very easy very easy for you to do in a sustainable fashion and something that's going to bring attention to the product that you're creating. We don't want to bring just more eyes on the block. We want to bring more eyes into what people are continuing to do because the more people that we can bring into crypto, the more people that we can bring into the ecosystem. So, anyways, the, the biggest thing is the more people that we can bring in and the more exciting that we can make it for people to be a part of you know, any crypto ecosystem, right? We've had a lot of people who've had bad experiences in the crypto space previously. We need to do everything that we can to make sure people start having fun, that they start having positive experiences, that they start associating with things that they want to be a part of. So if you're building something and you want to attract people, please just reach out to us, talk to the Bonk DAO, uh, get, you know, get out to an event, come to a conference, come do something where we can learn about what you're building and you can learn about what, what we're coming with. And if you have any questions, uh, yeah. Bonk's Discord is full of a variety of different developers, different people who are going to be able to answer your questions. We're doing everything that we can to localize it in various different languages. So don't worry if you're hearing this in translation or anything around there. We're going to be able to talk to you. We're going to be able to share a lot of those visions. Thank you for taking a talk, taking a time with Bonk and Dom. He's like the real leader of the Bonk DAO. So do you find for like... Okay. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Appreciate oh, it. I didn't expect it like kind of situation, but <laughs> that's all right.